James Holder, Eiffel TV, in association with MTK Global. We've been able to train a day called well. It's the third time I've got to start this interview. First time we've got uh, Hara Davis come in, as you'll see on Eiffel TV. Second time the, the champ, Tony Bow, you turned up. So, anyone else you want to drag in before we start yeah. talking, Dave? No, I think it's the end of the night now, so I think it's getting on quiet. It's a bit safe now for chatting. Let's talk a little bit about what we witnessed tonight. Hugo Lara is such a great fighter, such a brave yeah. performance from Anthony Connor as well on the flip side to that. How do you assess it? Um, First of all, I'm, I'm gutted for Fran. You know, he, he tried his heart out, he gave him his best. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, all you can ask of us fighters is, is that when they get the big opportunities, they give it everything they've got. And, you know, it wasn't just him with a, a normal world champion. You're talking about an elite level fighter. You know, Linares is a class, class act. He's, uh, his feet, his balance are fantastic. And his, his boxing brain, I said before, and his boxing brain is second to none. And just the way that control the range for every second of the, of the fight, you know, he, he boxed at his own pace, and he, he put on a masterclass tonight. And you know, credit to Lenares for that, but also, like I said, credit to uh, to Anthony for uh, for giving it his all and, and trying his best. Lenares seemed more accomplished than when we had him over the first time. He seemed yeah, when more he, when he was over for control. the first time. I think he stood in. He stood in. He wanted to not crawl her out, and he stood there and had a fight. You know, for the first first half of the fight or whatever, and then towards the end of the fight. When um, when he got to his boxing, then he pulled away. Um, this time round, I said before, Andy, he'll have, he'll have, he's, he's got a great brain. He's got a, he's got a very good trainer as well. Um, he'll have gone back, analysed the fight, and said, look, the only why, the only reason why this was an hour fight is because I stood there and had it out with him. I'm not going to do that this time. And that's what he did. He, he just boxed and he refused to engage and stand there and, and have, a, have a fight with him. He boxed his fight at his pace and, and he controlled the night. Who would you like to see Lenara in with? I'd love to, 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 to see Garcia. The Garcia fight seems that to be the fight. one that people want to see. Yeah, I think oh. if, if that fight gets made, I, I, you know, hopefully I haven't got any, any dates myself and I want to get over there for the fight because I think that is, a, that is a fight. It's a really good fight. Big fight, big, big fight. What, where does Andy Quella go from here? What, in your opinion, what he's, would you like to see Quella do now? Listen, he's got beat at elite level. He's not just got beat by a by a normal fighter, a, a, an average, you know, an average world champion or anything like that. He's got to be at elite level. You know, he lost his title to somebody at, at elite level. You know, so he can drop back down to world level, to normal world. Level. You know, there's, there's fights uh, against Flanagan, people like that. But he's got to look at himself and see whether he wants to carry on. What people don't realise, and, and you forget with these, is, is that he's tough, and because he's tough. The way that he fights, he takes a lot of shots. You go back to when, you know, to like 20 were boxing people like Gary Matthews. He was taking a lot of shots on the way in. You know, yes, he's got his hands up, but even when you get your hands up and you're getting punched through the gloves, it has an effect on you. You know, so he, he's he's had an hard career. So he's got to look and think, where do I want to go from here? If he wants to continue, then there's still still world level fights out there for him. Because like I said, Linares is a little bit of a level above. Um, but if he wants to walk away from the game, you know, hopefully now he's made, you know, his last couple of fights he's made a lot of money, um, and he can walk away from the game and enjoy his life, his family. You know? and that's something that he's got to make a decision. Speaking about walking away from the game, yeah. what decision has Tony Bowie been talking to you about? What insight can you give us? Do you think it's realistic that he could retire? Yeah, hundred percent. I've said from from day one, you know, I would like him to walk away. Um, he's He's got all his faculties in, intact, he's won a world title, he's stepped up and he's beaten David A in a massive fight and you know, it's reached out. You're still happy he's, about that, aren't you? Of course I am. Touch your soul that one. Listen, I'm still happy about beating McCarble. So that that <laughs> yeah, but the hay one that in particular just, has touched your soul, just, isn't it? That's just um, <laughs> the icing on the cake, you know. It, there's a lot of a lot of shit going my way before that fight. Um, and I didn't I, I don't have to justify what I did for Aimaker at all. Um, I don't have to justify the fact that I'm, I'm short. Um, you can call me whatever I want. You know, I don't have to justify anything. It's a fact. Um, just like it's a fact what I did for Aimaker. You know, one, one thing I would like to say is, is, is thanks to Adam Booth because he, he did an interview where he came out and he actually, you know, he, he actually came out and said my involvement with Aimaker. You know, I've just been speaking to Robert Diaz. You know, people, people that I dealt with. Uh, anyway, I can know what I did. So I've never had to come out, I didn't have to say that when, when they were saying, you know, just a t shirt boy or a towel boy or whatever. You don't have to do that, they're just, you know, little little schoolboy games. Um, but 
it, it opened up the floodgates people on Twitter and things like that to have a bit of fun, and it is a bit of fun. But bottom line is my guy won, so you know, I don't have to really justify anything, you know. Um, so the pressure of, of winning that, it just made it, it was just sweet, it was just dead sweet. So, so yeah, I'm still smiling, I'm still happy. I'm not smug, I'm happy, there's a big difference. Some people think that when, when things start going right and, and you start doing well, people think that you become smug. It's nothing to do with being smug. I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy in my life. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, that, that my guy won and the pressure's off. We've seen David Hay, we had him on the channel yesterday mm. in Scotland talking about his surgery's been successful. Mm. He feels he can be back in the ring by the end of the year. Yeah. If everything goes well with him, uh, will the rematch be considered as, as a viable fight for Tony? Or do you think um, it's a case of how Tony feels within himself. Well, can you answer that? I, like I said, I'd like him to retire, but I understand that the numbers that people are talking about, you know, there's options there like Wilder, like Parker, like the rematch. They're all big, big money fighters. So you've got to understand this for a fighter. You know, he's worked all his life coming through. Does he want to have that one more fight that's going to pay, pay that much money? You know, there's a, there's a strong chance that he will. There's a strong yeah, chance that he'll walk away. Boys, there's a strong yeah. chance that he'll have that one more fight. If it's that one more fight, we'll sit down, we'll have a, we'll have a think about it, and we'll see which is the best option for Tony Bellew, not for anybody else. When Tony said the bullies will sit down, he was including you in that, wasn't yeah. he? Did yeah. he give it to a lot? Yeah. Uh, more so since he beat here, since we've got world champion. His ego, his ego is starting to go out of control. You know, I seen, I seen something that he did with Sky where he said that uh, um, the, the goal that I scored on, on behind the ropes was fixed because I'm three foot tall and, and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't have possibly have scored that goal. Well, I'll have him know that Diego Maradona was the same height as me. And what about Janino? There you go. Janino was only a little bit taller they, than you. you know what, what do you mean a little bit taller than him? <laughs> I'm a little bit taller than him. Don't thoughts, you start. Thoughts on the spat that is Tony Bell, you Chris Eubank Jr. yesterday oh, on Twitter. Do you know what? It's not, it's not a spat, it's a bit of a laugh. You, you can only, is laugh, it, at, is it you can laugh? only laugh at that what Eubank's saying. Come down to super middleweight, hang on. He was, he was about 15 and a half stone, 16 stone at 15 years old. You know, so what? How does that make sense? You know, when, when, when does anybody have any recollection of Tony Bellew fighting um, at 12 stone? It, making light heavy almost killed him. Exactly. He was one angry man. Exactly. He was one angry man. Could you angry imagine man. him trying to do 12 stone? Oh. I'd, have to, I'd have to get a chainsaw out and, and chop at least one leg off. I wouldn't want to be around him too much. He was getting to the 12 no. stone block. No. He, he, listen, he, he, he's just stupid. It is what it is. It's like... <coughs> um, it's like... Um, it's like Jamie McDonald calling out Joshua. You know, we can all start shouting, jumping up and start wanting to punch people and, and start shouting shit, but it's not going to happen. So, you know, you just, all he's doing is, is the world's, you know, one of the world's greatest glory hunters where they can attach their name to something and uh, make their name bigger, you know, attach it to Triple G, make a lot of noise, get close to the fight. It doesn't happen. There you go. And now he's doing that with because he's looking around and, and who's whose name is right big now, he's massive right now. It's Tony Bellio. So he's attaching his, his his name to that by calling him out. So people that don't know boxing and, and don't forget, he attracts and he uh, he's very, very clever. He, him and his dad are clever and, and, I, and I I respect him for that. In the fact that they target the 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 uh, casual fans, the fans that don't know about boxing. So therefore, that's why he's won an IBO. They can, they can go to his, you know, go to the concerts and things like that with an IBO belt around his waist, and people think, wow, he's, he's a legitimate world champion because people don't know boxing. But boxing fans do know that he's not, he's not a legitimate. Well, well he's a, a legitimate in, in respect of an IBO, but in the bigger scheme of things, he's not really got one of the main belts. But the mainstream public don't. So by him attaching his name to a Triple G and then a Tony Bellew, Bellew's big mainstream now. You know, people that aren't boxing fans know who he is. The casuals know who he is. So by attaching his name to, to Bellew there, the casuals are now going to say, wherever they see him, oh, you find that Bellew. Oh, that's mad, you're stepping up to him. And he's like, yeah, 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 here we are. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, and so that, therefore, they all think he's an hero because this little dude here is challenging this big, massive heavyweight. Wow, 
good. He's very good, and, and he's got the he's got the personality to carry it off. I like it. I think I think he's great. But you've got to see what it is. In the real world, in real boxing, you just have a laugh at it. Very cool, well, great breakdown. Thank you very much, sir. And um, I will catch you real soon, hopefully, announcing Tony Bellew's next big fight. Thank you very much. See you later.